What's going on handy people? Today we're going to be removing the TCM from a 2006 Nissan Pathfinder. And what caused this TCM to go bad was the transmission cooler having a leak internally inside the radiator and an antifreeze had gotten into our transmission and it shorted out the TCM. And I didn't see a lot of uh, clutch material in the fluid so I'm hoping changing out this TCM fixes my problem. But what I would do if I could go back and tell myself before it happened is I'd put a tranny cooler. It's already got the one in the radiator and a separate one externally. I'd put two external transmission coolers on the car. And eliminate the tranny cooler that's part of the radiator. That way I don't ever have to worry about the radiator doing that. It's pretty common on these Nissans, so just a little bit of advice. If this video helps you out, subscribe. First thing you're going to want to do is jack the vehicle up and support it with jack stands. You're gonna need an oil catch can. You're gonna take a crescent wrench and remove the drain plug right here. This one's already been good and drained. So now we're gonna remove the pan with a 10 millimeter socket. Gonna remove these plugs. We got another one up here. <coughs> so there's three different bolts holding this valve body into this transmission. The first bolt that I have circled in yellow is the only one like it. It's for indexing the valve body to center it. The second picture shows the longest bolts. They're white and I've got them circled here. And then the third photo has the shorter bolts. There's five short bolts, six long bolts, and the one indexing bolt. And these bolts have to go back in, in the correct location. All right, the last one, the bolt that indexes the valve body. It's going to probably drop some fluid down on it. This will have two clips you have to remove. You just squeeze them and pull them out. It's a little bit difficult while you're juggling this. This plugs into the top of the transmission here and it was easier, easiest just to push this down and pull it all out. This transmission control module has been on back order at Summit for months and I finally just said forget it. Uh, finally got a new one from O'Reilly's. Took them a day to get it. So I would suggest not wasting your time with Summit. Here it is, it's, it's a reman from Dorman, and I believe that's the part number. And it says it needs to be programmed, but I'm hearing a lot of people saying that they didn't have to program it, so we're gonna put it in and see what happens. If we gotta take it to the dealer to get it programmed, then that's what we'll do. So we got a five millimeter hex, head, hex uh, Allen here. We're gonna remove all the solenoid bolts. You got one holding each one in. All right, so we removed all the bolts. We're gonna pull them out with a pair of channel locks and you wanna pull them straight up. They, these do like to break. If they break on you, don't, don't feel like it's your fault because they just break. And you can buy used ones on eBay or Amazon. If, if you need any, uh, let me know in the comments, I have some. And we're gonna take them out and lay them down in the same order so we don't mix them up and the reason i know they break is because i pulled them out before because i tried to repair this myself and it worked for about a week or two 
and then it kept blowing the fuse for the uh, transmission and the car won't start if it can't communicate with this. So you just take some channel locks, grab onto it, and these should come out fairly easy because I just had them out. And But they like to break right here on this plastic, uh, I'm not sure what it's called, pintle. That's what it would be on a fuel injector. All right, so I was able to get them all out. None of them broke, so that's good. Next, we're gonna pull all of these off of this plate that holds it in, and then it should lift right out. So this one, these are all five millimeter Allen heads. This one's a 10 millimeter here, and a couple of them have washers, so don't mix them up, but if you do, it's this one and this one. <coughs> Now most of these are short. This one's long and it doesn't have a washer. This one's long, kind of mid-range. This one's about the same size, same size as the other one with the washer. And this one's another long one, same length. So that's where they go. And this 10 millimeter also has a washer on it. I'm hoping I can just lift off this and keep them all in place. And I can. I'm gonna look and make sure they look the same. Sits there just like the old one. And I'm gonna slide the bolts from this one straight into that one. Ta-da! Don't throw away the old box. You won't get your core back. All right, now I'm just gonna tighten these back down. Now that we got the TCM fastened to the valve body, I'm gonna go ahead and pop these solenoids back in. And before I slide them in, I'm gonna coat the O-rings on them in a little bit of transmission fluid. And they should just slide right in. You wanna get the electrical connectors lined up here, and then you just push them straight down just like that. Now that that one's in and tightened, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of them. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug our electrical connectors back into the, the top side of the TCM. Slide the boots down and these plug in on the somewhere on the transmission when we get it in there. All my solenoids are in, uh, they went in pretty easy, and there is going to be a little bit of a gap under some of them, so don't keep forcing them down, it's normal. Alright, so we got our connectors in, we got one here, two wire, a uh, main plug, a main plug, and then this is going to plug into the plug that comes out of the top of the transmission. So let's get it in there. So the bolts that fasten the valve body to the transmission are three different kinds. You have the long ones here, and I have a picture of them. I painted all of the heads white. I'm gonna put that picture up and keep it there for about 10 seconds. So if you wanna pause the video while you're putting it together, I'd suggest doing that. And then you have five short, shorter ones. They're not the shortest, I don't think, but I did the heads on those red. And then you have this one here is an oddball. And what this one does is it centers the valve body on the transmission and it goes here. So right next to this bracket goes there. All right, so we're under the truck now. I got my transmission control module on a creeper because it's important. All right, I'm gonna plug in this green plug here that goes outside of the case. because it will be difficult to get to once it's installed. All right, I heard it click. Now, I'm gonna line this pin up here. 
into this. It's like a throttle cable or a throttle rod or something. Get the dipstick out of the way. We're gonna put this corner screw in here first. This is one of the shorter screws. We're gonna do another short screw down here. And we're gonna do a longer screw right above where our indexing bolt goes. Sorry, I'm calling them screws. I know they're bolts. All right, now it'll kind of hold itself up there. You don't have to break your arm. You wanna make sure none of these wires are getting pinched in between the valve body and the transmission. Now we're gonna plug this green connector in right here. And this bracket bolts in here on these bolts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put all the bolts in that hold this in. I'm not sure on the torque specs. I wouldn't go crazy on them. It's aluminum. And I'll leave a picture up of which bolts go where. So there's three different bolts holding this valve body into this transmission. The first bolt that I have circled in yellow is the only one like it. It's for indexing the valve body to center it. The second picture shows the longest bolts. They're white and I've got them circled here. And then the third photo has the shorter bolts. There's five short bolts, six long bolts, and the one indexing bolt. And these bolts have to go back in in the correct location. All right, we're gonna wanna put this indexing bolt in here and get it kinda tight because we want it to be centered. So we don't want the other bolts moving it astray and they all these are 10 millimeters all right now that that one's in and it's not even it's not even that tight it's got a little bit of play in it still but it's not moving around side to side that one totally centers the the valve body and then you can go ahead and do the rest so I got all the bolts started. I'm going to go over the lengths on them real quick. This is the indexing one. This is the long one. Short one. Long one. Long one. Short one. Long one. Short one. And you come down here. Short one. Long one. Long one. Short one. Now that we've got this bolt tightened, we're going to put this connector in. Otherwise, it'd be in the way of the bolt. Now we're going to go ahead and put the pan back on. After we clean it out, we're gonna wipe all that out and get it good and clean. We're gonna go all the way around and tighten the bolts. All right, so what we did was we got all our bolts started and they're all loose. You don't wanna tighten one of them because then the other ones won't line up. So we got them all started. Now we're gonna go all the way around and tighten them up. These ones down here by the drain plug are gonna be a little bit hard to get with a ratchet and an extension, so gonna slide it under here this corner one is gonna be hard to get with a ratchet so you're gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench for it and after that we're gonna fill up our <coughs> transmission and because I had antifreeze in my system I am going to pull one of the cooler hoses off and drain it into a, a bucket while I fill more into the transmission just to make sure it's all out of there Tightening that last pan bolt. There we go. I gotta make sure my drain plug is tight. What I did was I pulled the tranny cooler line off of that line in there. And then we're gonna start the car and it's gonna shoot, pump the fluid out so we can get rid of that contaminated tranny fluid. I'm gonna pump out a quart, shut the engine off, and then add a quart in through the dipstick tube. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I feel that all the contaminated fluids out. This car is starting, so I know it's communicating with the TCM. After that, we're gonna take it for a drive and uh, I'll let you know how it goes. All right, so I'm driving the, the Pathfinder. I haven't programmed the TCM and it seems to be shifting normally. I'm in third right now, went into reverse, but I do have a check engine light. I'm 
not sure if that's because of the programming or not. I'm, I'm guessing that probably is. But I'll pull the code, figure it out. All right, so we came back in and topped off the transmission fluid. It needed about a quart and a half more. And I pulled the code, and it was the old communication code from when the TCM had totally quit. Cleared it out. Code hasn't come back. Everything seems great. So that's it. High five. You did it.